with comedian Jim Norton. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Norton. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Wow. I, I live here now, and it's funny, I grew up in New Jersey. Anybody here from Jersey? I'm sure we got Jersey people here. Dude, I love Jersey. How did you not know McGreevy was gay? How did you not know? I remember his campaign slogan, read my lips. <laughs> And look, I admired him for coming out of the closet. I thought it was great. But I'd love to know what kind of evidence they had on Jim McGreevy. Because he didn't even try to deny it. <laughs> Normally in life, when you get caught, you lie a little bit. Like Clinton got busted. He's like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. We have the dress. You got me. <laughs> McGreevy, there must have been video or audio because there's a phone call. 20 minutes later, he calls a press conference. Ladies and gentlemen, I love cock. I quit. I spent a lot of time traveling in the last couple of years. I've been all over the place. Uh, I went to Iraq with Colin Quinn uh, about a, year, a little over a year ago, actually. I uh, went over to Iraq. <laughs> and it was before the whole Abu Ghraib prison scandal, which, look, I'm very pro-military, but that was an embarrassment for the U.S. Uh, although I will say the woman at the center of the whole thing, Lindy England, I don't know why, but I'm finding myself very attracted to her. <laughs> And I know I shouldn't be because she looks like John Larroquette. <laughs> but there is just something sexy about a girl with a mullet dragging a guy on a leash with a cigarette hanging out of her mouth doing that for a camera. You just know she's not going to blink twice if you ask her to jam a finger in your ass. And they were very, very aware of our safety. And uh, we got to perform in one of Saddam Hussein's palaces uh, in Baghdad, which was an amazing experience. And the security to take three comedians, I guess it was four miles, five Humvee convoy filled with special forces soldiers. They're all wearing helmets and bulletproof Kevlar vests. They had M16s. Even the comedians had the helmets and the bulletproof vests, but we didn't get M16s, <laughs> which kind of sucked. Because you're trying to be cool, but without the gun, you feel like one of the village people. It was just off. It's like when you put on your sister's dress, you just feel silly. <laughs> That's probably a bad example. It's not like I had an erection in the Kevlar vest. <laughs> And I'll never forget the soldier that was driving my Humvee. Very cordial guy. You know, yes, sir, no, sir. But have you ever spoken to somebody and you realize you're dealing with a psychopath? <laughs> I mean, he was pleasant, but I really didn't know what to say to him. I'm like, uh, so, uh, since you've been over here, has anybody shot at you personally? And he's like, oh, no, sir, but I wish they would. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> And he was doing 70 miles an hour, about a foot off the bumper of the vehicle in front of us. But I couldn't say anything because he's a soldier protecting me in a war zone. I felt it would be too effeminate to critique his driving. <laughs> yeah, could you slow down? This is quite a... <laughs> Even in real life, you can't do that. We all have the one friend that does 90. And one time you want to break the mail code and go, look, could you slow down? I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> but you can't. Because if you say that, he's going to pull out his cock and make you <laughs> suck it while he drives. So you got to use a little reverse psychology to make your friends slow down. You're like, uh, hey, I hear there's a lot of cops around here. 
And that usually works on your stupid friend. However, that does not work on a soldier in Iraq. I hear there's a lot of cops around here. Well, I'll be happy to kill them, sir. <laughs> flying was by far the most frightening part of the whole trip because uh, you fly in these Air Force C-130s, which are uh, cargo planes, you know, two propellers on each wing. And on the first flight, Kyle and I got to sit in the cockpit. So it's uh, me and him, it's the two pilots. And as we take off, there's two extra soldiers in the cockpit and each one is looking out the side window. So I asked why they were doing that. And the guy said, well, that's to make sure that no rocket-propelled grenades are fired up at us. Huh. That's relaxing on a flight. And it was nice to know that we didn't have, like, radar taking care of it. No, just some 19-year-old from Kansas City. Uh, bank left. And the scariest part of flying was landing, because they have to do something to make you a harder shoot-down target. They do something called combat maneuvers. Now, a combat maneuver in a war zone is when you go from 18,000 feet to 1,000 feet in a little over a minute. Now, I don't know if you've ever felt your ears and colon at the same level. <laughs> it is remarkably unpleasant. That male ego went out the window. I actually let out the noise. <laughs> Which, of course, disgusted the pilot. You know, he's like, hey, what's the problem? I'm like, oh, no, I heard there's a lot of cops around here. <laughs> and he pulled out his cock, and you know the rest. <laughs> now, I don't vacation much, but I did vacation this year. I took three trips to Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. Prostitution is legal, and there's a three-to-one exchange on the U.S. dollar. So Rio, or as I refer to it, Mecca. You can live like a rock star on coupons. Prostitution is so prevalent in that part of the world, the hotels have a very bizarre rule. You can only have a girl in your room from 11 at night till 6 in the morning. That's their, like, bizarre way of keeping it, like, really family-oriented. So you bring a girl in at, like, midnight, the guy's like, I'm very sorry, sir, but she has to be out by 6 a.m. And I'm like, what are you apologizing for? <laughs> I have been looking for an excuse like this my entire adult life. <laughs> How perfect is that after sex? Hey, look, I'd love to sit up and listen to you babble, but rules are rules, whore. <laughs> I uh, also went to Cancun this year. I went to Cancun last, uh, actually last March for spring break. MTV flew me down. I did two pilots for them, uh, neither of which got picked up. And I kind of figured they wouldn't because MTV has a certain look they go for, you know. Oof. <laughs> I figured it would be a lot of fun, but it was ultimately depressing because there are just things in life that remind you of what an old, out of shape nothing you really are. These are all beautiful 19, 20-year-olds on a beach, and I am an atrocity. Without clothing I really am disgusting I have an appendix scar In the middle of a fat stomach Which is gross Because it looks like My torso is winking <laughs> There is nothing worse Than a scar In the middle of fat Because fat doesn't Taper off When it senses a scar Fat goes as far as it can And then just wraps around And continues So I have, like, a Frankenstein wound with two pieces of blubber just staring at each other. Like, is he ever going to do a sit-up? I don't know, man. This is embarrassing. <laughs> but at least it gets a lot better as you pan up to my B-cup titties. Those are really attractive. God, do I hate my little fat tits. You ever pinch your little meat tits and wish you were dead? Oh, uh, you ever just stand naked in the mirror? You little fat-titted, mediocre failure! <laughs> you ever do that for three hours on New Year's Eve? <laughs> Sometimes all I can think of is taking a big dildo and duct-taping it between my fat tits and blowing my brains out. <laughs> now, I don't get uncomfortable. I'm not going to do it. 
because with my luck, the gun would misfire, and I'd have the really embarrassing experience of untaping a dildo for my tit. <laughs> there is no way to do that and not feel stupid. Ow! Oh! Ow! Dildo's hanging haphazardly. <laughs> phone rings, it's your mother. What are you doing? Ah, you wouldn't believe it. Remember how dad almost died? So I'm on the beach, I'm depressed. I tried the old trick of wearing a t-shirt on the beach, like that's more comfortable in 110 degree weather to, you know, wear a t-shirt and a cummerbund. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell under these lights, but I don't tan particularly well. I have the complexion of a urinal. <laughs> it's 110, I'm on a beach, I'm wearing sunblock 45, I look like I just took a money shot. I'm carrying an umbrella like some bisexual Mary Poppins, just creeping out all the girls. Where do you go to school, miss? And they're all 19 years old and they're drunk, because the drinking age is 18 down there. Now, I don't drink, but I like girls who do. I am not one of these annoying, self-righteous men. I don't like a gal who's too drunk. I don't know what too drunk is. I have never seen it. When I hear a girl going, nobody loves me, she's halfway to where I need her to be. <laughs> Passed out? Who's looking? <laughs> I hear snoring, that's my cue. <laughs> she's ready. And I actually tried Viagra for the first time when I was down there because it sold over the counter like aspirin. And I was slightly overconfident because I'm like, ah, oh, man, you're shooting a pilot for MTV. You're definitely going to hook up. So I finished the shoot at like noon. I pop a 100 milligram pill. Yeah, if anyone's ever taken this drug, a 100 milligrams will keep your dick hard three weeks after you're dead. <laughs> if they would have given one of these to Christopher Reeve, he would have walked home. I take a hundred milligrams, fast forward nine hours later, I am naked alone in my hotel room admiring it. <laughs> it was so frustrating, I finally just ran nude into the lobby. Look what you whores are missing! Because <laughs> it looks so swollen and delicious. You know those days where it just looks good, you want to put on sweatpants with no underwear and head out the door? Maybe you get a little clear spot on the front. <laughs> That's right, ladies. I'm what the FBI profilers call a secretor. <laughs> I've left a lot of DNA evidence on the back addresses on subway cars. <laughs> I just have this tendency to creep women out. It's really hard for me to meet women, because first of all, I have bad sinuses, and you don't realize how disgusting you sound until you see that look on somebody else's face. Because I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm like, hey, can I get you a drink? <laughs> and I don't know what turns a girl off more, is the sniffle or the swallow that comes right after it. <laughs> women get turned off completely and immediately by little innocuous things, things you'd never think of, like never rub your fingers together when you're hitting on a girl. Just grosses her out if you're like, hey, where are you from? <laughs> See, your hands are a giveaway to your fear But you have to move them a little bit You can't just leave them hanging stiff, you know <laughs> Look like a total sociopath Hi, can I buy you a drink And then we'll go for a walk in the woods <laughs> But then again, never rub them together vigorously, especially while staring at her cleavage and mumbling, nice. <laughs> and 
you can't even ask a woman, all right, what's the quality you look for? What do you like in a guy? Because women always say eye contact is a sexy, confident thing. But it seems like there's a fine line between sexy, confident eye contact and the unpleasant stare of a potential rapist. <laughs> and I have never found that balance. I don't know how to be sexy. If I catch a girl looking at me and our eyes lock, I panic and open mine wider. <laughs> then I lick my lips and rub my genitals. And mouth the words, you're dead. I guess a comedy show is a good place to take a woman. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm so awful with dating. I think, it, you know, it would be nice to come here because laughter is an endorphin release. So, you know, everyone feels good. And let's be honest, as far as a man is concerned, every laugh should taper off like... <laughs> My problem is this. I'm a really nice guy, but I laugh at horrible shit. And I've always done it. I think everybody has those moments. Like, you ever been out in public and you see something that intellectually you know is not funny and you shouldn't laugh? But you're with that one friend who doesn't have those boundaries, which is probably why you like him to begin with. Me and my buddy are in Houston International Airport waiting to get on a plane. We see a very old lady in a wheelchair, which is not a funny thing. She has no legs. Which is kind of funny. <laughs> she had two prosthetic legs, and she's holding them. <laughs> and she had them up on her right shoulder. And I know I'm not going to make it. Because intellectually, I'm not dumb. I recognize that's a very sad thing. But all my rotten little mind is thinking is, now batting number two, Derek Jeter. And I know I can't look at my friend. You ever feel somebody next to you shaking with laughter? And you know if you look, you're dead. But you have to look. It's like a car accident or German pornography. Did she eat that? <laughs> you know how happy it makes me that you just applauded a shit-eating joke? <laughs> So I took, I made the bad move of taking the sideway glance at my friend, and he is shaking and laughing so hard, he had drool coming out of his mouth. And I'm like, oh God, don't let me laugh, please don't let me laugh, and then he hits me. Do you think she's flying standby? Uh. I'm sorry, I laugh at awful shit. I saw Terry Schiavo on TV. <laughs> All right. It was like a never-ending Colgate commercial. <laughs> See, her husband went about the whole thing wrong. If I was her husband, I would have, like, used a little psychology on the parents. I would have said, yeah, go ahead, leave the feeding tube in. Then I would have showed up every day and fucked her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are so fucking hot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just want to go crazy with you. <laughs> Now, if you want me to lick your tits and have Betsy eat your ass, just bend your hand and stare at the wall. Oh. 
And of course, I have to take a moment to acknowledge, uh, obviously, my two favorite people in the world. Guys, I love you so much, man. Opie and Anthony, thank you guys. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I can't tell you how awful it was being off the air. I didn't get pussy for 26 months. <laughs> and I got to do the dream gig for a pervert. I got to host the Porn Awards. It was myself in 2004. Myself and Jenna Jameson were the hosts of the uh, AVN Awards. And God, was it fantastic. I didn't get laid. Oh. What the fuck? I didn't turn her down. Hey, get out of here. That's not professional. I'm just, she's not afraid of a gun. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. It was an amazing experience. I'm very happy I did it. Like a month before the awards, they flew me out to L.A. for production meetings because they take the porn awards as seriously as traditional actors take the Oscars. One of the guys even said, this is just like the Oscars. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm thinking, no. <laughs> no offense. I never jacked off to the deer hunter. That's not true. <laughs> so I'm out in L.A., and this guy, Mark Stone, is showing me around, introducing me to people. He comes to me one day. He goes, hey, man, Jen is doing a movie like 10 minutes from here. Do you want to go watch her shoot? And I was trying to think of a shorter word than yes. <laughs> I think I just blinked. <laughs> I got to stand about eight feet away and watch Jenna Jameson and Crystal Steele do a nasty girl-girl scene. Yeah. I hope everyone understands the beauty of what I'm describing. I now understand how religious people feel when they see the passion. I cried. I got angry. I hit a Jew. And the type of sex they have is athletic. It's not normal sex. I watched a guy named Eric Masterson have sex with Crystal Steele. They're both standing. He's standing, and she's kind of standing and bent. And, I mean, he is fucking her. It was like an attack. I mean, you know, pow, pow, pow. It was like watching the Williams sisters play tennis in a closet. And pornography tends to make it look like everything is natural and organic in bed. It's not. Procreation is natural. Good sex is learned, like talking dirty. I'm a big fan of talking dirty, but not everybody is good at it. You know, I happen to be very good at it because I'm comfortable. Like, I'll say something sexy like, you know, you like that shit? <laughs> but not everybody is that comfortable, you know. With... You ever have somebody try to say something sexy and it's so awful you want to splash hot coffee in their face? <laughs> I was with one girl. She told me to fuck her like a banshee. I don't know what a banshee is. I definitely don't know how one fucks. I guess if a banshee comes quick and then throws you out, you're in luck. And they don't tend to feature the kind of vaginas that I like in adult films. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, they show a lot of thin ones. Thin ones are nice. Ladies, please, if you have a thin pussy, don't think you're out of the race. <laughs> <laughs> but I tend to like a thick, heavy, the type of pussy that looks like it just smoked an exploding cartoon cigar. <laughs> Ooh. When you, when you pull your rotten little panties aside, I actually want it to flop out like a slinky. <laughs> and I like a big clit too, man. I like the type of clit you can see through snow pants. That is sexy. <laughs> you ever see a clit like that? Like a little midget's thumb? Oof. <laughs> Guys are so homophobic. It's like a little dick, yeah? Is it stupid? <laughs> Thank you.
One thing the Porn Awards had that was kind of weird is they had these awards. They have like best actor, best actress, all that stuff I expected. But then they have the award for best anal sex scene. And you can tell who those people are. It's the only table of nominees standing. <laughs> and this one blew me away. They have an award for best sex comedy. <sighs> I don't get it. I love to laugh and I love to come. Never together. And it's not a conscious decision, but those emotions are always separated for me by sleep and some sort of an apology. <laughs> like, I'm never getting blown. <laughs> You're quite a card. <laughs> Maybe if she slips and cracks her head right after, you know. Ah, you clumsy fat girl. I mean, for me, a sex comedy would be to watch Rosie O'Donnell being teabagged by Lexington Steele. <laughs> you guys know Lex Steele? He is God Almighty. Uh, male performer of the year in porn, two out of three years. He's about six foot three. He's a black guy, very handsome with broad shoulders and his cock. <laughs> it looks like me if I was darker. <laughs> and slightly taller with a better chin. I really tip my cap to any woman that does a scene with Lexington Steel. I hope you're getting hazard duty pay. He hits pussy like it's an abandoned building. <laughs> She's got homeless people running out of it. And she wants them to slow down, but they're filming. She can't even say it. He's like, yeah, you like that? She's like, yeah, but I heard there's a lot of cops around here. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate you guys coming. Thank you.